Okay. So we're still looking at Lord age 50 and the significance of that, or at least the play on numbers, because Paul is adding seven here. He's seeking to balance. He's, you know, if time is over seven years still, you know, which way is it going to play? Because while they expected the temple to go down 40 years after Christ died, it was a question as to which, what was the game going to be? Because, see, he died at 33, 40 years after that was 73, and that's what they really expected. But according to the old timeline, that could have played instead. So then it was like, well, he should have died at 40. So do we add 40 to that and get 80? Okay. Do we do we factor in instead the 54 years to the millennium? There were lots of different ways that it could still balance to the old schedule. That's why in Acts 1, you see the apostles saying, well, are you going to come back now? Because he's 33, and they're thinking, okay, 40 years has to run because it was church now, and so it's 40 plus 14 to make up this time to Abraham rather than 50, the number of years that were allotted to harvest the Gentiles, plus 7. It got changed from 57 to 40 plus 14. Uh, during the last seven of which, of course, the tribulation was supposed to happen. So there was there was that kind of, like, what kind of math do we use now? All right? And that's why the Lord says you're not going to know now. That's Acts 1. That's Acts 1, 7. You're not going to know now. No, you're not supposed to know. He doesn't say that he doesn't know. He doesn't say that the angels don't know. He's saying the humans aren't supposed to know. Now, I don't think the angels know either for a lot of reasons primarily because of their behavior, okay? Satan and company are trying to make the rapture look bad. Well, if the rapture date was known to them, they would have no need to do that. It wouldn't matter. It's, it's going to happen, okay? They wouldn't need to discredit the rapture to the believer. They would do other things, but they wouldn't need to, to make us not believe in it. They... They wouldn't need to mask it. They've masked the numbers you see on the screen for 2,000 years. It's not possible that I'm smarter than all the scholars. I hope you recognize that. It is possible that the scholars didn't do their homework. All right, because, you know, scholars have all these political games that they get enmeshed into because they're scholars. Everybody wants to use a scholar to justify his position, so the scholars push both left and right all the time. He hardly has any time to do what he's paid to do, which is be a scholar. He ends up having to do all kinds of, you know, luncheons and all this fundraising garbage. So they don't have time to study like they want. Okay, so for 2,000 years, the scholars haven't had time to go back to the Bible and revisit this whole issue de novo, but a brain out could do it. And granted, it took me years to do this. It wasn't easy. I started in 2000, in the year 2000, and by 2004, due to a math error on the 1077, that's how I learned this, because I made the error and I went to God and I'm like, well, what's wrong here? The error was a mirroring error. I knew that the 1077 was mirrored somehow, <clears throat> but I didn't know how, and Eusebius had made the same error. I didn't learn, didn't know that until years later. So I basically made the same error that Eusebius did, except Eusebius didn't correct his error. And I went to God and I said, you know, something's wrong here because the, the, if I mirror the 1077 the way I'd expected, which is how Eusebius did it, then I don't come up with the right timeline. And so that led me on the journey that results in what you're seeing here. Okay, so you got the 1050 here, you got the you got the Lord age 53 here rather than 50 because what if the temple goes down in the middle? Again, because the timeline would be revised due to church as 40 years, paying back Israel for, you know, the time that she was 40 years in the land. 
um, not in the land, in the wilderness. And then the 14, the hanging 14, would still take you to the millennium at, as, at the old scheduled time, just by a different route. So that's what they expected. And they thought, wow, Lord, age 50, that would work. Okay? They expected the temple to go down then. That was one of the many scenarios they had, okay? And then he'd be age 53, meaning beginning his 54th year here. And you know what? The millennium could have begun then. That would have been poetic. Temple year 1000 based on dedication. That would have been poetic. But, of course, it didn't happen. Okay, well, if it didn't happen, maybe the temple goes down here at temple year 1000. Okay, when there's 44 years left on the clock. And then the millennium, I mean, the, the tribulation would end there. Okay, but it didn't. Because Paul's writing that year. All right, now look. See? That was when the 40 years were left to run to the millennium. See that, that play? He's going to make that play again based on the millennium here and here. Isn't that cute? Paul picks that year to write because it's 41, 40 years. It's really 40. You, you know, again, 40, 41. The end, the start. This is what Mary had picked. She stops, instead of stopping at his scheduled death, which should have been up here, she runs it fat past to this. Well, if he had died on schedule, this would have been 17 years. You know, again, using 57, 17 years, using 56, 16 years. That would have been 16 years after he was scheduled to die. 17 years after he was scheduled to die. Okay. Why pick that? Because it's 50 plus 7. That was depicted in the law. And because there would be 40 years left until the millennium begins. In other words, the 57 is evocative under the law and the 40 is evocative under the law. The whole idea here is that Israel was required to know what time it was and they used meter and the dates. <coughs> when they packaged their dates, they looked for these kinds of convergences and parallels so they could remember them better. Also so they could see that God orchestrates time. Because if God picked the Lord's 56th birthday when Paul writes for the tribulation to happen, there would be 40 years left on the clock and the Jews left, as it were, in the tribulation would realize that timing. And they would know what time it was for them. Okay, I mean, they have, they're they going to end up, as we know from Revelation, but in those days, the book of Revelation didn't exist. So all that extra detail was not known. At least it was not known in writing. And 40 years would have, would have remained on the clock at that point, but even though 40 years remained on the clock, which would be evocative to Israel alive at that time, if it was actually the tribulation, there'd really only be seven years left. Okay, you see how that works? See, this would be 17 or 27, depending on the perspective. Okay, if the rapture happened here, there would really only be seven years left on the clock because it's church, so you can't go by the old schedule. There would only be seven years on the clock, but it would be starting 40 years before the mill was scheduled to begin. In other words, the millennium might begin early because it could have begun early. Because Paul himself wasn't sure when the rapture was going to happen. Because you can't be sure. You don't know how other believers are growing in their souls relative to you. And you don't even know your own growth. And that's why Paul writes in Philippians 3.10, If by any means, Greek words are ipos. If by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. See? You can be resurrected just by the rapture or you can die and be resurrected that way because he was post-cross all right the paradise compartment was empty Christ ascended and took all the Old Testament believers with him um, when he rose and that's in Ephesians 4 8 and 9 all right 
But in Philippians, which was written later than Ephesians, Paul says, I pulse. If at any time I die, you know, absent from the body, face to face with the Lord, the rapture could have happened then. And it would have been evocative to those left behind because of that. Because they're looking at the old schedule. So 4159 could have been a, a good year. All right? Now, as far as I can tell, maybe you can see it and I can't. I'm not seeing any other parallels for 4153, 4156, or 4159. I mean, the parallel that Paul's making is here to the 41s. Okay? And he's bracketing them because they're C. And the Lord's 97, that's year 1057 from David's death. That's the, when the millennium was supposed to start. So that's a play on 41 years after Paul writes this way and 41 years after Paul writes this way. See, because he's, this, he's, this is the year he writes. So both of, so all of these are, you know, different benchmarks to show that 41 years remain after he writes. So if the rapture happened immediately after he wrote, it would be very evocative to the Jews to warn them what was going on. Other than that, I don't see any other parallels here. Maybe you'll see them. I don't. Let me know if you see them. Okay, the next one, of course, is kind of a no-brainer. Your 1077 from David's Hebron kingship is 4173. And as I said before, another 1077 from 4173 is 5250, which is right down here. So that's kind of a no-brainer. Now, this next one, again, I also don't see any other parallels. There might be some. Paul is likening this to, to 17 and 27. 17 years based on the Lord having to be age 40. He's writing when he's 46. Okay, what's 17 years after 56? What's 17 years after 56? Okay, and... 17 years after 56 is 73, which we would call AD 73, which of course the temple, by some people who are counting AD, will call the temple going down in AD 73. Others would say it's AD 70. we got a three-year problem, not only um, in our own BC AD system, but there was a three-year problem in the Roman AUC calendar, which I haven't worked out yet. And then there's another three-year problem um, that might actually be in Scripture itself. I've, I've got to play with those things. See, it, it all comes back to this being seven years late to start with. Okay. Um, a whole lot of people have done the timeline on Genesis 5, and they, they, they take shortcuts and that's you can't do that with the Bible you have to go do it the long way so like one guy started well you know Adam started 4100 years before Christ no it was really 4106 Christ is born 4103 not 4100 from Adam 4103 but when you run the Psalm 90 numbers it works out to be like our ADBC because it's, uh, Moses really is saying uh, 10, 50 years from the end point of, of his own Psalm 90, Messiah is going to be born. He really is saying that. Okay, well, then we got a three-year problem. I mean, we can't call that 1050 B.C., although we should, because it really works out to something like 1047 B.C. So then do we say that the Exodus really happened in 1437 B.C.? Well, that doesn't actually work either. It throws the AD numbers off. You can't just bump everything up all the time. There's a, there's an anomaly here, and i got to figure out if it's an on-purpose anomaly in the Bible. In other words, the Bible saying, yeah, there's an extra three years. Because why does, do you remember this, how we started this increment? How can 54 become 57? So that you got a 50 plus a 7. Where's the extra three and a half? This is already seven years late. But this was seven years late. So relative to that seven years late with Noah, it's the same amount of time. No extra time is lost. 
So where's the extra three and a half years coming in? All right, and I I don't have the answer to that. I only know that there's an anomaly here, and I gotta find it. And you know, maybe I'll die before I find it, and you'll find it. Okay. Lord age fifty. I don't have any parallel other than what I'm showing. Lord age fifty three. I don't have any parallel. Okay, see, there's an extra three years here that seems to be due to the temple, except that the total is seven, as if it's the same seven. So that's confusing. Paul, of course, is writing three years after this, playing again on the tribulation. It could have started then, 41 years before the millennium begins, which ties to... The millennium itself, 41 years later, see, obviously. But it also um, helps him to balance these numbers at the bottom, which I haven't gotten to yet, so let me keep on going in order. So this is where we stopped. Okay, Lord is age 70. That's what we would call AD 70. It's really weird how Paul tracks to our BCAD. That's 1077 from David's Hebron kingship. And, of course, it's 1070 from his United Kingship. This number plus 1077, like I said before, is 5250, which is the end of time under the old schedule. This minus 1077 is that. Okay? And, you know, why I don't, you know, it's, it's just a sort of like, Paul is picking a mirrored number. Okay? So, this, this, going forward 1077 is the end of the millennium under the old schedule. This, going backwards 1077, is this, David's kingship at Hebron. Okay. Now Isaiah had picked up the story at David's birth, but David's birth is not being tracked. There's nothing like 1050 from David's birth or 1077 from David's birth. Okay, they're not measuring from David's birth. They're measuring from his kingship, which implies that the criterion um, for measuring changed to kingship once David became king. So then our next benchmark, which is a possible uh, trib rapture date or trib end date, will be the Lord himself at age 77, which happens to be year 1077 from David's United Kingship. That's 4180. That would be temple year 1024, temple foundation year 1034. Okay, that would be Exodus year 1514, la la la. Now that is pregnant because it's 21 years after Paul writes, and 4180, and the the um, 21 years goes back to Jacob, okay, and I'm just checking something, okay. It goes back to Jacob, but it goes back to Jacob um, in a different way. Strictly based on the 21 years. There might be some other tie. Okay. Jacob is age 40. See, here's Jacob's birth. Okay, when he's 40, he goes to Haran to get a wife. He was ordered to go by his dad. You know, his dad finally got over giving him the blessing instead of Esau. And then, you know, uh, there was that problem with Esau having his Gentile wives, and they didn't like that. So, Jacob had to go back to Haran and find a relative. Okay. So, he's going back there in 2146. He's 40 years old at that time. Okay. It so happens that when he goes back... Okay, um, when Jacob is born, see, this is 560, 40 years, 40 years um, before the Exodus, 
But see, look, here's the flood. Jacob is born the 450th year after the flood. He's 40 years old and goes to get a wife, okay, in the 490th year after the flood. You see that? God's tracking that to a 490. I don't know why. So the implication is that this is somehow tracking to a 490 also. I don't know. Or this is tracking to a 490. I can't find any. All right. But definitely the 21 years is talking about the generation building that occurred. You know, the 21 years that um, Jacob was working for Laban. All right, so that's definitely what Paul's talking about here, and that's why he uses 21s. It means generation building, family building. By the time Jacob left Laban and left Haran and came back to the land, all right, 21 years, the, the beginning of the 21st year, um, was just starting, and he already had 12 kids, okay, and probably had grandkids at that point. Who knows? Okay, I know that Levi's youngest daughter was born to him in old age in Egypt. So, you know, his oldest kids were, you know, at least 20 years old, some of them. Or no, let's see. He worked six years before he even got married. So his oldest kids would have been like 15, 14, 15. So they didn't have any kids. So it was just him and his 12 kids and his two wives and the two concubines. And then all that booty. You know, speckled. Speckled animals. Which aren't even... Um, they're speckled so that they can't be used in, um, you know, temple sacrifice. So they're his property to eat as he chooses. All right. So the Lord is 77 coupled with this 21 is being evoked all right but there's not a parallel 21 years prior to it so maybe there's more to it than just saying this connection okay but this is all I know all right next stop the Lord is age 90 that's year 1050 from David's death that's the beginning of the tribulation most likely seven years before the millennium the Lord would have been 90 then. He would have begun his 91st year. John is actually dating Revelation to that. Except that it, it looks like John is changing the calendar. In other words, when I said there's a three-year anomaly that might actually be in the Bible itself, Paul's accounting here might be using the Roman AUC, and John might be correcting it. Because John is saying he's writing um, 58 years after Christ died, 84 years after Judea becomes a province, 126 years after Caesar was in Judea and fixed the calendar. Okay, well, there's a three-year variance because the Lord died at 33. 33 and 58 is 94, not 91. Paul's using 91 to 97 for trip dates. He is also using 94 though. That's one of his. That's one of his benchmark meters. Okay. Um, I wonder if I'm going to be able to do this. Let me show you. Um, oops. Let me go to the verse. Oh, please don't die on me, computer. All right. See, look. Cause, cause John is tracking to Paul. You got 66 here, that's Nero. You got 77 here. Okay, that's after the year of the four emperors that's still under Vespasian. Okay, you got 84 here. Okay, you got 94 here. This is just before Domitian gets killed. So he's tracking to 94. So is John when he does just the first part of his dateline. It's almost as if he's using a dateline in two different formats. Because that, see, 84, and then you got 7. En rapé pro. En rapé pro. That's 5 more years. That's 89. Or 6 E. 
7. So the rapture could have occurred there, or the tribulation could have been over there, or it could have started in 87 at N A G A. In other words, the love of God is not yet complete because the tribulation hasn't started yet. Ha ha. See, very clever. But I really don't know if that's true or not. And it's just, you know, hypothetical anyway what he's doing. He's just saying if the trip happens at this time or that time or the other time, then, you know, this would be the meaning of that time whenever it happens. But he's tracking to it here, okay, based on the Lord age 90. But he also, as we just saw, is tracking to it based on 94. So, And there, there was a three-year problem with the Roman AUC calendar. So it's like he's doing it in two formats, and so is John. The Roman AUC calendar might have three bogus years in it, which means that the the founding of Rome, AUC, means Ablor de Urbe Condita, meaning the founding of Rome. It might have three bogus years in it, in which case we should be calling it 1050 BC, 750 BC as its founding instead of 754. All right. And again, there's a three year. When we say 754 or 753 with the Roman historian, 754 with our own calendar, it gets really screwed up. Okay. They might have had that problem. It might not just be us. And that's why Paul's numbers track so closely the emperors. He might be using it with and without the three-year problem in the Verona calendar that's, that Augustus Caesar had finally said, yes, this is correct, we're going to use Varro. And then by the time Paul writes, Claudius had made the Varro calendar a law. So that might account for why we got this three-year variance and why he's also listing 94 here. See, under one calendar you call it 90, but it's really the same year and you could call it 94. But I don't know that for sure, so I'm, you know, taking this to three years later. I, I don't know, because John's doing the same thing. 33 years, Christ died. 58 years later is a 94. Okay, but 84 years from Judea becoming a province on Roman time would be 91, you see? And then 126 years from when Caesar was in the Levant or revised the calendar would also make it 91. So it's like, okay, I give up. No, it's one of these two. I'm going to find out the you know resolution of it someday. If you want to look up the problem with the Roman calendar, just look up Varro calendar problem. Just Google on that. Livius.org has a piece on it where they talk about the three bogus years that Varro just slapped in in order to make his timeline balance. Which it doesn't balance because he was also assuming 35 years for each of the kings. It was just, his, his calendar's really wrong, okay. But we don't know for sure how to fix it. So our BCAD problem seems to be the same as the Veronica calendar, so that's why they canceled themselves out. So here we go. One timing session, you're calling it 91. A different timing session, you're calling it 94. Okay, because the Lord would be the same year. The Lord could be really 91, but we call it 94. Or it could really be 94 and we call it 91. Take your pick. Okay, but here, I just added three years. Okay, that would be temple year 1040. That's pretty evocative. Okay, the temple was supposed to die mid-4197 according to the absolute calendar because that's three and a half years before the millennium. All right, whatever B.C., A.D., or Roman U A.U.C. year we call it. Okay, and then the temple foundation year's anniversary at 1050 would be 4196, so that would be evocative if the temple was to die. But see, here you're, you're, you're looking at 
is it really 4196 or 4197 because mid year after 4196 starts there's that you know rounding thing where it was really 4197 so what do you call it okay so i just kept this the same for the sake of our own sanity but you got to bear in mind that mid year 4196 rounds off to 4197 Okay, because the temple breaks down in mid-year. The temple goes down in mid-year. So the temple foundation would have occurred in Itanim mid-year based on Itanim, which is Rosh Hashanah. Okay, that would be April, which would be Passover, which is exactly when the temple went down. It went down, Titus started his um, attack on the temple on Passover. And it took 114 days which is the equivalent of 9th Ave from uh, uh, Passover. If you use the, calendar, use the Jewish calendar correctly, which the Jews don't know it today. There's 57 days between the beginning of Passover and Pentecost, or and 57 days between Pentecost and 9th Ave on God's calendar in the Bible, not on the Jewish calendar. So that would have been pretty evocative for it to go down then. And that would have been, you know, Passover, the same day that the Lord died. You see, Paul's using these numbers on purpose to give you an idea. Well, it could happen here if God was still playing time games. But it wouldn't be based on the time. It would be based on the maturation of church. But church could mature any time. Because you don't know who's a believer and how far grown they are. You don't even know about yourself. Okay, and then... The Lord would have been age 47 as of 4200. Okay, let me see if I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording, good. The Lord would have been 97 according to the absolute calendar, whatever B.C. or A.D. we call it. And whatever you call it on the Verona calendar, that was the idea. All right, so the trip would have begun when he was 90, a.k.a. 91. He would have been 97, a.k.a. in his 98th year, on his 97th birthday. That would have been Temple Year 1044. That's evocative. And, of course, that's 41 years after Paul writes. The millennium, therefore, was supposed to start at the end of 4200, the end of the year. The Lord is born at the end of the year. Okay, and he's accounting based on the Lord's birthday. So that's the same thing as starting year 4201. Because the Lord is born in the last week of the Roman year. All right, Paul makes a big stink about that fact in Galatians 4 4, using the, uh, um, the Greek myth about the god Kronos, who in the Roman thing was known as Sat Saturn. And the myth was that Kronos, the reason why the new year started was that Kronos' wife would give birth at the end of the year and then feed the kid to her husband. He would eat it. That's evocative of eating time. The year is eaten up. All right. And Christ was born in that very week of the Saturnalia festival. That's why Galatians 4.4 4 uses the word chronos the way he does. And plays on pleromatos. Because pleromatos means pregnant. Pleroma means pregnant. A, a ship full of cargo or a, a woman full of fetus. You see. So it would start at the end of the year. Well, that would be Temple Foundation Year 1054. That goes back here. See, making good on the 54 years old, the Gentiles. And then the extra three and a half years, I still have yet to account for how, where they come from. All right. Because I thought they came from the Temple delay, but I'm not so sure now. And that's 41 years after Paul writes. So then he keeps on going. He's adding seven. Okay, just like, um, you know, because the 78 sevens is 315 syllables. Okay, it's 105 threes. So he's adding seven. Daniel had used 308 years for Noah's time in the boat until his birthday. and 308 days, rather. So then Paul adds seven to that because there's that hanging chad seven because Christ didn't die in the 62nd week. He died in the 61st week. So does God have to add seven to make up the time? Will God do that? I mean, he doesn't have to do anything, but might if he did, that would be your 2100 from Jacob's birth. 
The significance of that, of course, is that it's with Jacob that the people Israel start. Jacob becomes Israel. He's renamed Israel when he comes back to the land 21 years, 21 years after he goes to Haran to get a wife. So that would is that's a way of saying hi, you know, the the time of the Jewish people got fulfilled, but it's seven years later because there's that seven year delay, which just keeps on going back all the way to Noah. Never got made up. Okay? So it would balance time relative to Jacob. It would also balance time, this was really a shock for me, relative to Noah. Because it came goes all the way back to Noah. See? 3150 from Noah, and again, it's end of year 4206, but you say 4207 because it's seven years too. That's balancing to Noah. So God's balancing time pre-Israel as well. And that's temple year 1050 at the end. That's Exodus year 1540 at the end. Flood year 2550 at the end. You know, I mean, you know, there's technically only six years difference here, but the, he's playing on the beginning of the of the new year when he does this. So that's why I'm I'm just using six here and rounding them off because that's what he's doing. Is he's playing on the at the beginning of the year. Okay, this is actually 4207 at the beginning of the year, which is equivalent to 4206 at the end of the year. So that's why this is done. These years are basically completing, and it's even more relevant because Exodus starts at the beginning of the year. The flood starts at the beginning of the year. Um, because I think Noah was born on what we call Passover. That's how the numbers balance the best. And then the temple year, of course, is starting in the middle of the year relative to April. Okay. So that's why that's going on. And then, I, I'm not 100% sure this is relevant, but this can't be the right kind of number, except that the 130 here ties back to Adam. I'm going to have to still play with this. If the Lord was age 130, you know, Adam didn't mature till he was 130, that's kind of gee whiz. But this isn't so gee whiz. Temple year from dedication 1077. So what if God picked that as a rapture date? And then, of course... Millennium ends 5250, that would be Temple Year 2094, Exodus, and blah, blah. There's not a whole lot of significance here except that this is when the Millennium ends. And I'm going to have to play with that some more to, to figure out, you know, what else is going on here. This whole part of it, I just, you know, i got to play with it more. Then if Paul added 7 to get to 5257, that would be temple year 2100, two ten fifties, and then that of course would be Exodus year 2590, flood year 3600. So that's a sort of introduction to the basics, and um, in the next increment we'll try and do something.